for students fraternity especially in order to benefit the law students at large we are proud to join hands with the lead generation of faculty of law university of colombo together we bring you this wonderful experience to expand your horizons widen your knowledge and heighten your courage and have no fear to enter the profession awake the professional in you This is the second session of the online discussion and lecture series on professional development and career guidance targeting law students, apprentices, and even junior lawyers. This is a joint collaboration of Pro Studies of Sri Lanka Law College and the lead generation of Faculty of Law, University of Colombo. We warmly welcome all the participants for this session, and we would like to welcome our guest, a practitioner in criminal law, civil law, public law, and fundamental rights in appellate and original courts. And he was the deputy president of Bar Association of Sri Lanka from 2015 to 2017. And the personality appeared in most of the prominent cases in Sri Lanka. So, and none other than, he was the law president of the Law Students Union in 1991, a best counsel at the triangular mood competitions from Law College, Open University, and Faculty of Law University of Colombo. If we were to discuss about him, it will consume more time as he is a great leader and a teacher who taught many students as well. And he's none other than Mr. Salia Peris, President's Council. We warmly welcome you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Right. Uh, for the benefit of the Sinhala community, I'll brief in Sinhala a little bit. Siladanatama Subasantiawak Veva, Burtia Jivitedi, Nisi Magapenuim, Opa de Samako, Boa, Divere de Dishavata Gaman Karavimata, Behavim Ibahalvana Karak, Lesser, Apositu Nisa, Nisi Perasala Sumakin, Obe Anagate Sarta Karaganata, Pro Studies He, Burtia Sangvardanaha, Magapenvi Maker Care, Profession. Burtiedi, Gaveshne, Nokala Shastra, Parsha Karamin, Vivid, Marga Pilibanda, Obava than Wat Karanate, Eva Gema, Burtia Prajava Saha, Shisha Prajava, Ekama Vedikava to the Samban the Karanate, Obava Sartaka Vimam Petu the Gura Karanate, Polaba Vishavidiale, Niti Piti, a lead generation, Ha Samagin, Akal Badaganabin, Nirmanikala, Suiseshi, Marga Tadeshan Malave, Devan, Melisitic Harin at Sudana, Eva Gema, Mema Vedasatahana. So most say Sachi Viva, Evagema Pro Studies Ha, Faculty of Law, DTPT, Lead Generation, Facebook, Web Pituela, Sachi Viva Narapimat, Oberta Hakiavati Benama. Right. Sir, uh, this is the second session, and the aim is to discuss about the challenges that we face in the legal profession. Other Api Janati Patini Sali Piris Makuman Samagasaka Chakar and Balapur Twinne, Urti Edi Api Puhunapana Gatan. Right. Uh, as an approach for today's session, sir, you are an eminent personality in the legal field. So many students and even outside people know who you are when we speak the name President's Council, Salia Piris. So today with the session, basically, other than advising law students, you should, we, we can have some sort of advice as well. But I think it's better to give some pieces of advice with related to your career and your life as well. Right. Sir, mm. the first question from me. How did you decide to become a lawyer? Right. So, uh, law was not my first ambition, Charitra. Uh, mm -hmm. I, like many others of my generation, uh, I did, uh, for my A-levels, I did bioscience. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. at the time I did my A-levels and the time I selected bio bioscience, it, my idea was to become a doctor, not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had had a keen interest in law. I have a keen interest in politics, especially constitutional affairs. From my younger days, I have followed 
the political developments and especially constitutional developments in our country. So mm -hmm. once, uh, uh, once I sat for the A-levels and the A-level results came, I found that I did not have enough marks for admission uh, to medical faculty or to the university for that matter. And so then I, at that point, I had to take a decision. Uh, so I decided not to repeat my A-levels. With my results, I, did, I decided to do the law entrance examination. I did not have any, uh, the, apart from my sister, who was a few years senior to me, I did not have any particular connection with the legal profession. Uh, uh, but anyway, I decided to do the law entrance examination. But at the time I did the law entrance, I also decided that I was determined that one day I will also do a degree and also ensure that I get a, have a postgraduate degree in law. So keeping those in mind, I sat for the law entrance. I passed the law entrance uh, exam and entered law college. So that is how I became a lawyer. Uh, law was uh, certainly initially not my, uh, my dream. My first dream was to become a, a doctor. Uh, and uh, so, so there are people who, when, when I do consultations, there's one consultant who uh, had a consultation with me and he told me that the way I have consultations is similar to the way a doctor has a, a consultation. Uh, so anyway, uh, I ended up doing law and well, I have no regrets and uh, that, that is how it happened. Right. You have ended up being a lawyer. Not only that, uh, with, a, with an experience of uh, like two, three decades. Now you are a president's counsel. Sir, finally, uh, you chose the field of law. You entered law college and even you became the president of the Law Students Union. So how did your student life dealt with all those things? Can we speak a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, very briefly, just to tell you, I think law college, especially uh, uh, those who are at law college, and even those from law faculty who come to the final year at law college, law college offers you a very unique perspective of Halston. Now, I, I'm not too sure whether students nowadays make full use of that uh, opportunity. The location of law college, the proximity to Halston, the ability to access members of the legal profession are important uh, things which are important for a law, for a law student. The very place where Halstor, uh, Law College is, Halstor, is important because you get a feel of what it is in legal practice. Uh, where, where the student life is concerned, I must say, I learned many things, not only in the classrooms of Law College, but to be honest, even more than the classrooms of Law College, what I did learn was, uh, was in the corridors and in the canteens and in the halls of Law College in extracurricular activities. Uh, well, I was the president, as you said, of the Law Students Union. And I think as president of the Law Students Union, the biggest thing which I learned was how to handle people. That is so very important when you are in the legal profession, you must be able to handle people, clients, law, your colleagues, judges. And I think that law college experience as the president of the Law Students Union. Uh, I was before that the editor of the Law Students Union and the, the, the ability, the opportunities you get to handle meetings, sometimes very contentious, boisterous meetings maybe, as well as the ability to handle people uh, in the run up to elections, after elections, all that gives you a lot of uh, training. And I think that training is, more, is extremely important. So one of the messages which I want to give young uh, would-be lawyers or young lawyers is a key thing in this profession is how to handle people. Uh, if you are able to handle people, I think you're halfway through. ृत्ति 
සූදානම් වීමක් වුණා ජනාධිපති නීතිජ්ඣතුමනි ඔබට මම මේ කතා කරපු ආකාරයට අපි කොහොමද විනිශ්චකාරවරුන් නමක් ද සහෝදර නීතිඥවරුන් වෙරියන් සමග සහ අපේ සේවා දායකයන් සමග ගණතුනු කරන්න කියන පිළිබඳව අපි සාකච්ඡා කරමු මම හිතනවා මේ වෙලාවේදී අපේ ශිෂ්‍ය ප්‍රජාවට ඒ වගේම කනිෂ්ඨ නීතිඥවරුන් ගොඩක් අපත් සමග මේ අවස්ථාවේදී සම්බන්ධ වෙලා ඉන්නවා Facebook සජීවී ප්‍රචාරණය ඔස්සේ සහ සෝම් මාධ්‍ය ඔස්සේ ජනාධිපති නීතිඥතුමනි ඔබට ඔබ නීති ශිෂ්‍ය සංඝ මේ සභාපති තුමන් හැටියට නීති විද්‍යාලයේ කටයුතු කරා පොතට පතට සීමා නොවි බාහිර වැඩ විශාල ප්‍රමාණයක් සමග කටයුතු කරා ඔබ ඒ වගේම විවාද කණ්ඩායම ඉංග්‍රීසි විවාද කණ්ඩායම නායකයා බෝටිං තරගාවලි වලදී සිංහල ඉංග්‍රීසි බෝට් තරගාවලදී ඔබ ඊටම දක්ෂතා දැක්වුවේ කණ්ඩායම් මෙහෙවපු පුද්ගලයෙක් ඉතින් ඔබ පොතට පතට පමණක් සීමා නොවි මේ බාහිර වැඩ කටයුතු සමග ඔබේ අධ්‍යාපන කටයුතු සහ වෘත්තීය ජීවිතය සාර්ථක කරගත්ත පුද්ගලයෙක් ඉතින් ඔබට ඒ අවස්ථාවේදී ගනුදිනු කරන්න ලැබුණ අභියෝග කොයි වගේද අමතක නොවන සිදුවීමේදී අපි ඒ පිළිබඳව චුට්ටක් කතා කරමු ඔව් අමතක නොවේ නොව සිදුවීම ගොඩක් තියෙනවා विनिशकार मिनिमाइंटर Of being able to respect your opponent, even in court, uh, outside court, that culture has to be there. So I think that is something very important which I learned. My second very important uh, experience, I would say, is from the booting at uh, law college. So uh, to, to elaborate on that, the booting at that time was not as developed as it is now. so there was a the law faculty of the university of colombo organized a moot competition uh, in all three languages between the uh, institutions law college law faculty and the legal department of the open university of sweden and they had they got the high, among the highest in the land in the legal field to judge these mooting competition so i was fortunate that i was able to captain the both the singhal and english mooting teams and um, the among the judges in the english mooting competition we were judged by justice mark fernando mr lakshman kadirgam and mr faiz mustafa in the singular competition we were judged by uh, mr sarath silva who was uh, a judge of the court of appeal mr sunil di silva who was the attorney general and mr ranjit tabe surya president's counsel so the mooting experience also played a big role for me it, it was a huge experience when i entered the bar because here there was at the mooting competition In, and it was a public competition with the, uh, the auditorium or law faculty. Uh, the finals were held there, and here was Justice Mark Fernando, uh, senior judge of the Supreme Court, who was judging the moot, and that gave me invaluable experience. So what I want to tell uh, present-day law students is that the experience of mooting, doing mock trials, is very very important, and I think all. institution whether it be law college or law faculty or the open university must encourage we must build this culture of do be of doing do be on trial for for your professional life right uh, so that was your student experience uh, dealt with law college and you did extra curricular activities as well apart from the studies but you excelled in your studies and even in the profession at the moment sir you have taught many students apart from like uh, we'll move in the flow like we can specially discuss about the student life and even the apprenticeship period and even after that and even uh, the other professional scenarios but uh, when speaking about mr salia peris president council many people know your personality in different ways so teaching is 
the best way to liberate you one side one, only, uh, not only teaching but you have many ways but teaching is one more prominent character in you sir obutuma guru guru vari guru vare vidihata neeti prajavata bohoma samipa vecha putgale ethin api swalpaya katha karamu me guru vurtiyat ekka kohomoda oba sambandhena vurtiyak vidihata sambandh unada kohomoda oba e obage palapuruddha guru vare vidihata beda hada gatte ඔව් අත වශයෙන්ම මම ගුරුවරයෙක් හැටියට මම සම්බන්ධ වෙන්නේ ඇප්‍රෙන්ටිස් කරනකොට ලෝ කොලෙජ් එකේ ෆයිනල් එක්සෑම් එකක් ඉවර වුණාට පස්සේ අපිට මාස තුනක් තිබ්බා ප්‍රතිඵල එන කාලය. ඉතින් මේ ප්‍රතිඵල එන කාල එන අතරතුර මමයි මගේ තව මිත්‍රයෝ තුන් දෙනෙක් දෙන්නෙක් මගේ බැච් එකේ මට වඩා පහල බැච් එකක තව අපේ මිත්‍රයෙක් අපි හතර දෙනා එකතු වෙලා අපි කල්පනා කරා මේ රිසල්ට්ස් එන කාල මොකද්ද කරන්නේ කියලා. එතකොට අපේ අදහසක් ආවා අපි ලෝ එන්ට්‍රන්ස් එකට ලෝ එන්ට්‍රන්ස් උගන්න පුළුවන් කියලා. ඉතින් අපි කල්පනා කරනකොට අපි අපි එක එක කෙනාගේ දක්ෂතාවයන් තිබුණා. ඒ කාලේ ලෝ එන්ට්‍රන්ස් එකේ තිබ්බේ IQ general knowledge language. අපි සසකාව ශාලාවේ කොළඹ සිනමන් ග්‍රෑන්ඩ් එකේ ඉස්සරහා තියෙන සසකාව ශාලාව ගිහින් අපි බුක් කරා. බුක් කරලා අපි තියෙන අපේ ඇඩ්වර්ටයිස්මන්ට් එක දැම්ම ඔබ්සර්වර් පත්තරේ ලෝ එන්ට්‍රන්ස් එකට එහෙම තමයි අපි පටන් ගත්තේ ඒක දීර්ඝකාලීනව උගන්වන්න නෙවෙයි කල්පනා කරේ ඒ කෙටි කාලෙකට උගන්වන්න තමයි අපි මුලින්ම කල්පනා කරේ අපේ පළවෙනි දවසේ පන්තියේ ළමයි හය දෙනයි ආවේ ඒ හය දෙනාගේ අතම හත් දෙනෙක් ආවා මුලින්ම ආපු ආපු ශිෂ්‍ය බලනකොට වෙන කවුරුත් හිටියේ නැහැ පන්තියේ ඔහු විතරයි ඉතින් ඊට පස්සේ මම හිතන්න ඒ ඔහුට විතර මේක තේරුමක් නැහැ මේ පන්තියේ ඉන්න එක කියලා පිනාරි පහලට විතර නැගිටලා ගියා ඊට පස්සේ තමයි අනෙක් හය දෙනා ආවේ පළවෙනි දවසේ හය දෙනෙක්ගේ පන්තියකින් අපි ආරම්භ කරනවා. හැබැයි ඒ අවුරුද්ද අවසන් වෙනකොට ඒ සසකාව හෝල් එකේ ශාලා දෙකක් කෝ තුනක් පිරෙන්න පන්ති අපි තිබ්බා. අද මගේ ශිෂ්‍යයන් මහදි කරන විනිසුරුවරුන් ලෙස කටයුතු කරනවා. නීතිපති දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවේ නියෝජ්‍ය සොලිසිටර් ජනරාල් වරු ඉන්නවා. විවිධ ක්ෂේත්‍රවල ප්‍රයිවට් බා එකේ ජනාධිපති නීතිඥවරු ඉන්නවා. अवश्यता අවස්ථාව මේ වෘත්තියේ විශාල මට ලැබිච්ච විශාල භාග්‍යයක් කියලා මම සලකනවා. හා දැට් වොස් යුර් එක්ස්පීරියන්ස් විත් රිගාර්ඩ් ටු ටීචින්. ඒ කියන්නේ ඔබ නීති විද්‍යාලයට ඇතුළත් වෙනවා නීති ශිෂ්‍යයෙක් ලෙස එහිදී ඔබ සාර්ථකත්වයේ මම පෙත් විවර කර ගන්නමින් නීති ශිෂ්‍ය සංගමයේ සභාපතිතුමන් ලෙස දිවුරුම් දෙනවා. ඒත් සමගම බොහොමයක් බාහිර කටයුතු කාරණ එක්ක නීති විද්‍යාල අධ්‍යාපනය අවසන් කර පොහාම ගුරුවරයෙක් විදිහට යම් කිසි කාලයක් නීති විද්‍යාලයට ඇතුළත් වෙන්න සිහින දකින්න ඒ ශිෂ්‍ය ශිෂ්‍යාවන්ගේ ඒ අනාගත සිහිනයන් මල් ෆල ගන්වන්නට ඔබ කටයුතු කරපු පුද්ගලයෙක්. අද ඔබ ජනාධිපති නීතිඥවරෙක්. බොහොමයක් නීති ශිෂ්‍යයින්ට කනිෂ්ඨ නීතිඥවරුන්ට නිවැරදි මග පෙනෙන ජේෂ්ඨ නීතිඥවරෙක්. ඉතින් ජනාධිපති නීතිඥතුමනි ඔබ නීති විද්‍යාලයේ අධ්‍යාපන කටයුතු ඉවර වෙලා ඇප්‍රෙන්ටිස්ෂිප් පීරියඩ් you entered the apprenticeship period sometimes there might be challenges and even we can discuss about your apprenticeship in two separate sectors you joined the ages department and even uh, you were under president's council chiranta halali at this also so how did you deal with such two practices yes so uh, the attorney general's department at that time took uh, apprentices on uh, depend uh, on the basis of the a uh, final examination they took the first 15 students at the uh, final examination and the first 15 students were given opportunity to, to apprentice with the ages department and we got our commencement letter and our termination letter from signed by the attorney general himself and uh, we had to so we were assigned to various uh, senior counsel uh, we i and two of my other friend another friend of mine we uh, did our first sessions of apprenticeship with mr upan sayapa mr upan sayapa was then deputy solicitor general later on he became additional solicitor general and he became uh, solicitor general now mr upan sayapa was one of the strictest persons 
in the legal profession. He was a, uh, at law college, he was a lecturer. He was one of the toughest um, examiners. It used to be said, Mr. Ubuan Sapa used to set the evidence paper and uh, uh, he would, uh, he was the board chairman in the final year and his board was considered a very tough board. In fact, I narrowly passed my uh, evidence paper. I got, uh, to be honest, I got 44 marks for the evidence okay. paper uh, uh, in that year. So anyway, with uh, Ms. Upan Sayapa, we started uh, working. Now, Ms. Upan Sayapa would, during the apprentice year, uh, during the sessions, he required us. He wanted us to go to court. And we had to keep a notebook. And mm -hmm. every week, Mr. Apa would have a session for us where he would discuss with us. He would discuss with us, well, what did you learn this week? And we had to tell him what we learned, what we saw, and then he would exchange ideas. He would, he would exchange ideas. He would talk about the judges. He would say the, talk about how the counsel behaved. Uh, if he had been in court, very often we used to accompany uh, him to court. So in that way, he made us really go through our apprenticeship period to ensure that we visit the courthouse and we watch. So I have uh, memories of, I saw Mr. Sarat Silva, Justice Sarat Silva and Justice DPS Gunasekar. That was the first courtroom I went to as an apprentice in the downstairs of the Court of Appeal, court number 107. Uh, and I saw Mr. Ranjit Tabesuri, President's Counsel, arguing an appeal case before uh, Mr. Sarat Silva and uh, Mr. DPS Gunasekar. It was a murder case. The murder case where a man had shot his wife and Mr. Abe Surya was arguing for an acquittal. Uh, Justice Sarat Silva didn't accept that argument and there was sort of a heated uh, quiet. Been, Mr. Ranjit Abe Surya was making very emotional submissions. And then I remember uh, Justice Sarat Silva saying, Oh, Mr. Abe Surya, we have been around here for much too long. We are not going to get. Uh, just because we become emotional, we are not going to take decisions on that. Anyway, at the end of the day, he uh, reduced the death sentence to a seven-year term. Uh, he reduced it to culpable homicide, not amounting to murder, and finished the case. So that is my first memories of my apprenticeship. With Mr. Tiran, uh, those days in the AG's department, they allowed you to also apprentice with a private uh, lawyer from the private bar. So I apprenticed with, in the same person, Mr. Tiranta Valaliyad. And I must say, I'm very grateful for the opportunity I got there. And also because later on, I continued to have, uh, to build, uh, to, to uh, see, uh, to uh, work with Mr. Valiant in certain instances. And uh, I, I had got many opportunities from Mr. Tiranta Valiant. And uh, Mr. Tiranta Valiant gave, gave us the aspect of how you would, uh, from the point of view of a criminal defense counsel, how you would act. So I, I have seen, watched Mr. Valeria the, in consultation. I have watched him cross-examining cross witnesses and much was learned in that process. But during the apprenticeship period, one thing which we did, and I would advise all apprentices, we they spent a lot of time on our uh, practice, on uh, the apprenticing. Sometimes we, we used to go to the, to the attorney general's department, then from there go to Mr. Valeria the chambers, and it would be a full 12 to 14 hours, we would work as apprentices. And that uh, hard, culture of hard work well, is very important. Today, where my apprentices are concerned also, I insist on that culture of hard work. It is so very important that uh, you, when you are a young lawyer, when you are an apprentice, you put in your best effort and you work hard during these years. The first five years of your life as a lawyer, as a young lawyer, are the most important years of your professional career. That is very important to remember that. Obage Gurtiya Jeevite, Palaveni Aurudu Paha, Palaveni Aurudu Paha Tamai, Vada Itamatma Vedagat Kala Parichet, Mata Matakai, Mithani, Me Balangina Samahara, Nithik Never Halati, Sheshtadikan Vinishakar Varekita, Nimal Gamani Amaratun the Kela, Vinishakar Tumai, Tama Daksha Vinishakar. Ituman Hitipat Department, Jest Raja Adinitin, the Russian Katu to Karmin Tamai, Mahadikaran is over a career path. Ituma, Nitipat Department, a trip pick up Yavasta. A trip pick a velave, Ituma, Kiop Kata, Matatama Matre. Your mama, it will end up with Mamma and Aru, Pahalako, Visaka, Pahalako, the Hatak meeting the Murti. 
කිව්වා මම මගේ පළවෙනි අවුරුදු පහේ තමයි මම වැඩියම වැඩ කරේ මහන්සි වෙනවා ඊට පස්සේ බොරු කරත් ගමන් නැහැ මොකද පළවෙනි අවුරුදු පහේ ඒ කියන්නේ බොරු කරන්න කියලා නෙවෙයි කියන්නේ නමුත් පළවෙනි අවුරුදු පහ පහ තුල ලබා ගන්න අත්දැකීම ඒ ඇති කරන ඉම්ප්‍රෙෂන්ස් tamunge jeshtayan kerehi ati karana impact ekak mata thamai tamunge mulu vurthiya jeevithayama rada pawadena e nisa taruna neethignayan hariyata ekak mata denna thiyena upades thamai e tamunge palaweni avurudu kiipe thula uparimen wada karanna mahansi wela wada karanna kawadawath eka paadu wenne janadipa neethi chithumani oba ge me pilithura avasan karapu wachana kihipa ginwama ilaka prashnayata yomu yonnam oba thuma e kiyapu aakareyata oba thuma vishala abiyoge ekata mohuna dunna neethi pithi departamentriya saha private ba ekge di apprenticeship period ekak ekka gana dunna karadi but with hard working e kiyanne kapavi men wada kirimat ekka oba thuma e abiyoge saarthakawa jayagatta putgele idin janadipa neethi chithumani oba thuma ge thawath prashna kihipa ekin उपदेशन චරිත මම පොඩි කතාවකින් පටන් ගන්න මම මගේ පළවෙනි නීතිඥ වෘත්තිය මගේ පළවෙනි රස්සාව මට ලැබිච්ච හැටි දැන් මේ මම දන්නවා මේ 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 සෙෂන් එක සමහර විට ආධුනික නීතිඥවරු අහන් ඉන්නවා හැමෝ හැමෝ කාලයක් තිස්සෙම ඇප්‍රෙන්ටිස් කාලේ ඉවර වෙනකොට අපිට තියෙන ලොකු ගැටලුවක් ඔළුවේ මම තමයි තමයි ඊගාවට අපි මොනවද කරන්නේ මොකද අපි දන්නවා ඇප්‍රෙන්ටිස් කරාට අනිවාර්යයෙන් සීමිය ප්‍රින්ටිස් කාලෙ ඉවර වුණාම චේම්බර් එකට නැත්තම් ඔෆිස් එකට අනිවාර්යයෙන් ගන්නේ නැහැ සමහර සීනියර්ස් ලට ජූ ඇප්‍රින්ටිස්ලා කීප දෙනෙක් කියනවා එතකොට තෝර ගන්න සිද්ධ වෙනවා ඉතින් අපිටත් මේ ප්‍රශ්න තිබ්බා දැන් දැන් මම හිතන මේ ප්‍රශ්නේ ඊටත් වඩා උග්‍රයි කියලා සෝ දෙයිස් ඇ රික්වස්ට් ෆෝ මී ටු සේ දිස් ඉන් ඉංග්ලිෂ් ඔල්සෝ ඇන් සේ ඉන් ඉංග්ලිෂ් ඔල්සෝ සර්ටන්ලි සර් ද ඇයි සෝ ද ද ෆස්ට් ෆියු ඉයර් the first year especially as you finish your apprentice year you have a they, it is very problematic because you don't there is a period of uncertainty in your life and i'm sure all the apprentices today i know there are about 600 apprentices they must be undergoing this uh, uncertainty it was the same thing in our time also so in october 1992 october i had we had finished almost finishing off in the ages department uh, my friend who was apprenticing with me and who had actually top our batch uh, mr gamni wanna say kara the two of us were apprentices in the ages department and in the uh, chambers of mr valli at the then uh, my friend joined the national development bank he was batch top he got a job opportunity in the mdb so i was left i was wondering what to do there is no no certainty of what you are going to do we are going to take votes where we are really of first where will i have my first appearance පළවෙනි පියරන්ස් එක කවුරු හරි ඉදීද නඩුවක් දෙන්න පළවෙනි ෆී කොහොමද ෆී සම්බ කරන්නේ how do you earn your fees all these things are in your mind and you have a sense of uncertainty so same thing with me and then uh, when i went home that day i got a call it was from a senior in the ages department senior means about 4 years my senior he was a state counsel and he said there is a vacancy there are some vacancies in a unit of the ages department called the wer branch that that at the time of the jvp conflict just after the jvp conflict so there are a lot of uh, people in detention and they had to be charged so the wer branch used to handle the files in the of these detainees jvp files and you had to sit down read the file fill up a form and uh, the form is you fill up the charge sheet and send it up so he said there is this job available are you interested the salary was not great the salary was going to be 3000 rupees it was going to be 3000 rupees and uh, that was just before we took votes said when once you take votes it will be increased to 6000 would you take this chance would you like to take this opportunity so uh, for me i grabbed at that opportunity we i saw it as a stepping stone to the ages department as a way to step into the ages department so that 
uh, I'm very grateful to that the state council who gave me this, uh, who informed me of this opportunity. Today he is a judge of the Supreme Court, and uh, so four of us joined this. Four of us uh, were taken into the WER branch, and we uh, uh, we all four of us I think saw this as a stepping stone to the uh, to get in a state council. So of the four of us who were there, we uh, uh, in a month or so, in the eighth, after we took courts, the Attorney General's Department called for application. And we applied and joined the state council. Among the four of us, two judges, uh, two, two of them are judges. Uh, one is on the verge of becoming a judge of the Supreme Court, and the other is on the verge of becoming the president of the Court of Appeal. And uh, the third is an additional solicitor general in the Attorney General's department. And of course, the fourth was me. I uh, joined the AG's department, but I went into private practice thereafter. So the message what I want to say is. Your, there will be opportunities which come your way. Of course, we have to, as a bar, we have to create opportunities. This is, I really believe this, that uh, the, the bar association, we have to look at how we can create opportunities for young juniors. And this is a must because young juniors need guidance. But to tell you, uh, uh, those of you who are apprenticing or those who are in your final year, there will always be uncertainty. But don't get discouraged by that. Don't get discouraged by the uncertainty. Uh, that is, take it as part of the of a challenge in your life. Right. So always you took uh, challenges in front of you. That means there was a challenge after you uh, finished studies at law college, and you faced a challenge in teaching law, uh, teaching law, uh, students to enter the law college, and successfully you won the challenge. And when concluding uh, doing the life at the AGS department as an apprenticeship. You had made a tremendous effort to make it a success. And here, sir, after uh, practicing a few years at AGS department, you took another challenge to move out to the private bar. So how did you face challenge and what were, were the background, the circumstances that made you to proceed in that such a way? Okay. So I, when I joined the AGS department, my dream was to stick on in the AGS department. I wanted to become a deputy solicitor general, uh, maybe uh, thereafter to join the court of appeal and to go uh, to uh, join the judiciary perhaps or to rise up in the ages department. In my uh, end of uh, three years, or about three and a half years into the profession, one of my friends who was in the private bar, uh, and of course, who's one of my colleagues who, uh, who did the, uh, who do classes together, Ms. Ajit Pereira, he told me, that, why are you, why are you waiting? Why are you in the waiting in the ages department? Come to private practice. Private practice is a, a good area you know, to, to, do, to come into. Why don't you think of leaving the department and coming into private practice? So I, I, I was in two minds. I, I actually, I sought the advice of many people. I, I spoke to many people. Some of them are now, some of them are my supervising officers. And each one told them something different. Some uh, One told me, at least today, a judge of the Supreme, senior judge of the Supreme Court, he said, your, your criminal law is sound, but why don't you wait to and learn some civil law? Because in the four years in my ages department, I had done only criminal trials. I had, I had been a prosecutor, state counsel, doing criminal trials throughout the country. Uh, someone else said, why don't you wait on? So everyone gave a different view. Uh, the high court judge before whom I was uh, doing my the prosecutions was high court judge, Mrs. Shirani Tilakavadda. She was very encouraging. She said, state counsel. She used to be very formal that way. She said, state counsel, if you want, if you want to decide to do private practice, this is the time. Uh, you, are, you are four years in the bar. Now is the time if you want to do private practice. It all depends on what you want to do. But that is a good idea. So uh, uh, there were different people saying different things. So in any event, uh, I decided to take the challenge. Now, of course, you know the ages department, you get a fixed salary. It is a, and it is an excellent mm -hmm. place to get a training, excellent place to work. And I, uh, I enjoyed working there. I enjoyed the company of the of my friends, uh, of my colleagues in the ages department. But anyway, 
I took uh, that 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 point. I had to take a decision. Uh, in fact, my my mother-in-law told me. She said, "Why do you want to give up your pension? You are entitled to a pension. Why do you want to give that up?" But in any event, I took the decision. And so, exactly four years into the uh, the agency department, I decided to enter the uh, private bar. I resigned from the agency department, and on the from first of January nineteen ninety seven, I joined the private bar. So I, I will. After that, I will tell you about my first case in the private bar and how I got it and how thereafter. Yeah. जनाधिपत निधि चिंतन में यहाँ पे ओबटुमा के प्राइवेट बाय के संबंध में मात्र का मूल काले ठीक है कसीरो वाले रहती नाडू लेबिंग पीले पंद्रह वाके में तं ओबटे ओबटे पावल नो याम किसी पीड़ने के लोग वाले रहती में ऐ पेंशन ने का गिवाप कराने विश्राम के टोपा गिवाप करला आते हैं लाल ओबटुमा उटिंग <laughs> matter nadu la even the income matters yeah and the income matters so you yeah. ages department uh, i cannot remember what the salary was but i think it was at the salary at that time was about 30000 or 35000 rupees uh, there is a separate allowance which is given so with that allowance i think it was about 35000 rupees so i uh, my target was i thought okay if i leave the department i have to at least earn 35000 rupees for the month now i know some today 35000 uh, 35000 uh, today uh, at that time uh, and today there is a difference in the value of money but be that as it may so that was my target so i one, one thing is you have to how do you get cases now you can't get in, you can't go into unethical practices you can't do touting you can't advertise so how do you do yeah. get cases so one of the, the so that is that is a that is a huge challenge but for that you must have confidence in yourself obo oba gana vishwasa thaba ganna ona me karanna puluwan thiyena mage experience ekak thamai mama aswe aswenna onna menna thiyeddi mata call ekak aawa mage mitra ekge mata wada awurudu dekak vithara senior niti pradesh departamentu idala aswecha senior kenekge mata call ekak aawa ela ewa kawadda den naduwa thiyena oda me dawase sandu danida nadu first appearance ekak ऐसे में do you have a case मांगो नहीं है क्या तो ये मालूम इतना क्यों हुआ आये मना मान नाडुआ केवान ना क्या मान नाडुआ केवान ना ये पाल पाले में नाडुआ माम पेनी ही थी कोट्टा वा महेश्वरतु सावी कोट्टा वा महेश्वरतु सावी क्या ना बाद देगा मुझे सावी सर्च करते हैं इतना इतना मालूम आता है माइटर ने रुपया तुंदा को ये गैस तो अपने that they were going to leave the evidence of witnesses and i had to cross examine the witnesses so i took the case i i i was worried the court of those days there was no express way so you had to go on go road and turn it takes about 4 hours to travel so i stayed at a friend's place in gol and uh, went to uh, the court of courts appeal that was my first case so this is uh, how if i or everyone cases will be when you start private practice cases will be a challenge then i was fortunate my uh, mr tirandha valley with whom i apprenticed mr valley at the was leaving the country he was going as a director of public prosecution in belize and mr valley at the had a number of cases and he was distributing his cases to several counsel uh, because now uh, he was going abroad he wanted to hand over the cases to counsel so i had a, he had or, or he had some confidence in me he was a senior counsel he was not president's counsel then but then he was very senior uh, but anyway he had confidence he said can you handle these briefs and he gave me about 10 cases uh, for which he had been retained uh, some of those cases were bribery cases some of those cases were murder cases he gave me those cases and said you go and appear in these cases so i had about 10 files which mr valley had handed over to me so i could as a result i was lucky that the first few months of my career it looked for people outside they could see that i had i was having work that i was coming to court 
I, and I, I, I was appearing in cases. So that gave me a little uh, push, uh, gave me a, a little edge to build up my practice. So uh, one thing which I want to say, then thirdly, I want to say this. I received a call from a senior, uh, from an instructing attorney. Her name is Mrs. Tavarasa. Mrs. Gauri Shankari Tavarasa. She gave a call. I, I didn't know her at that time. She said, uh, I, I was told you are leaving the Attorney General's Department. Mr. MLM Amin, President's Counsel, Mr. Amin, President's Counsel, he told me that you are leaving the department to send you work. Now, I knew Mr. Amin as an opposing counsel in the AG's department. When I used to be state counsel, Mr. Amin used to come for cases in Kalutara and Colombo. Mr. Amin used to, he was a senior president's counsel. Now, for some reason, Mr. Amin, when he heard that I was leaving the department, he wanted to help me. Right? And so he had told Mrs. Tavarasa to send me some work. So I got a case in the high court. Uh, I got a fee of uh, 5,000 rupees to appear uh, in a matter. And I think I made, did a good job in appearing. I appeared for some sureties. They had the, the accused had jumped bail. Uh, उसाहिमा I went to the library. I went to the library and I went through some cases. And I came across this photocopy of a judgment where it said that you cannot remand sureties. So, because I was ready for that case uh, and I made that submission, ultimately the judge didn't remand my clients. Now, my instructing attorney was very happy that I had delivered results. So, then she continued to retain me for cases. So, what I want to tell you is, if, as a young lawyer, as young lawyers, uh, we, uh, some of you will be taking notes very soon. You have to be first, you have to be reliable. You have to be available. If you accept something, you have to appear. Now you can't, if you, if you, if you are not reliable, other people are not going to give you work. I got work from Mr. Tiranta Valliad. I was his apprentice. I was just four years in practice. Mr. Valliad had the confidence to give me a few files. Because I had been able to establish that rapport with him. So what is very important is you must be, A, you must be available. You must be reliable. The person who is handing over a case to you, very often your first cases will come from other lawyers. seniors It's about A so my first year in private practice, I was able to get new cases because, and I remember my friend telling me, my friend Sajid Pera telling me, what is most important is to be available. Another instructing attorney, Mr. Prasanna Gunawadana, he told me, he said, you must come to Halstorff and wait, even if you don't have cases, Come to Halstorff, be around. Then when people see you, they will give you work. Right? So I, I took that advice. Of course, not, not, not just to hang around there, but you be around. Then you then when people see you around, then they remember uh, so and so is available. So part of this whole exercise is networking, getting to know people. Now I, I don't come from a legal background. Mama, uh, my mage, uh, and how is that? Because through, through your friends, through your seniors, 
even those who don't know you, who see how you conduct yourself in court. When people, sometimes, they, I have had instances where a person, a lawyer seated next to me, after my submission is over, he said, can I have your phone number? Can I have your phone number? I have a matter I want to retain you. Right? But you do that through by establishing trust among people. Right. Uh... Bohomo, Pedagat, Katawa, Kiki, and Obutuma, Kohoma, the Ekati, take a canoe. I am very generous in the Jimmy, Mamma, Obutuma, the Kinaman, Pana, Karan, Koleka, Yamkis, Yamkis, the Valka, Satan, Karma, Antimate, Boma, Lassa, and Machinica, Kikutu Ragata. My country, the Ripakan, Obutuma, Truptiva, and the Karna, Kwevi, Machanaki, Obutuma, give Vajanali, my mom put a gas. It is a happy Ilanga Prashna. Generally, the Nidis is the money over, maybe the Sasa. May cut you to Kada in Pasukaragan, then private practice again over to my Sarah. You played the private practice. So you uh, you had like at the moment when you were to be a junior of a certain senior, uh, you all had a problem. And even as uh, students, we might have the problem in the nearby future. It is generally within the money, or better, a Tibuno get a lower senior can ignore a Nikoma. It is a cut you to Karnak, or better get a lower. Namu. Kale a thick, Obotuma may cut you to Karna, Sartuka Jaganidi, Obotumata are a junior slave select Karan, Evake Avastava in Nati, Obotumata di Monohar, that you might be having something to say about your juniors, the first junior, how the juniors build up with you. So, can we speak a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah. So, so actually, my uh, first permanent junior uh, was Mr. Upul Kumara Perum. I had one junior. Before Mr. Kumara Peruma, who he used to be uh, off and on in my chambers, he is now practicing in Giriulla. Uh, my first junior was Mr. Paul Kumara Peruma. Uh, he uh, he was uh, age wise, he was about uh, the age difference between us. I think it's about a few years, about four year difference. And he uh, he was at law college. Uh, he had finished his finals, and he came to meet me. And then I uh, asked him where. Uh, why don't you come? Because by that time, uh, that was somewhere in 1997, when I had started, the year I started practice, I found that I needed someone to help me with the work. So he joined me. Uh, my office was at the YMBA, uh, and we used to work very late. Sometimes uh, he and I used to go work from, we used to finish court, uh, come to the chambers, and it may be about nine o'clock when we left, and the two of us would do drafting. He, uh, he would do a draft, show it to me. I would correct it, and uh, we would do. He took actually he he. Uh, it was in the last part of his apprentice year. With him, another friend of his also came, who was now uh, working at Paramadu. And we uh, so the next day he took quotes. I still remember his first appearance. I I stood outside the court and gave him the brief and said, "Go and appear." And I I say he it was before Mrs. Tilakavadhan, and I still remember uh, how nervous he was when he first appeared. But he also, he worked very hard in chambers. He worked very hard. He was willing to take up any challenge. He was willing to learn, uh, willing to learn drafting, willing to learn the law. And very soon when the next, in the next year and next two years when other juniors came in, he was a mentor to them, right? So we were all, our age gap was very small. My age gap with him may have been four years, with the others also five, six years. But then uh, with that, uh, he now, so in a few years' time, he left my chambers and now he has his own practice. My second junior, uh, there were three, actually that year, there were three apprentices who came. Now I was five years in practice, so really though I say apprentices, I could not give the apprenticeship letter. So the letter was given by Mr. Asoka Veera Surya. Mr. Asoka Veera Surya gave them the letter of apprenticeship. Uh, the, uh, commencement and the termination later, but they worked in my chamber. Uh, my second June, uh, so there were three of them who uh, came to me. One, one was the, uh, one of them uh, was from the law faculty. Two of them were from the law faculty. One was from law college. Uh, today, uh, that my second junior, so one of them stayed on in my chambers. The others went on. Uh, today he is a president's counsel, Mr. Upali Mohanty, who has a uh, who practices in the southern province, right? Uh, so then after that, so like that, then thereafter others join my chambers, and uh, well, I uh, I have uh, selection of juniors is concerned, or what do I look for from a junior? I expect the junior to be reliable. I expect the junior to be reliable, 
and a junior to be diligent, right? And I, I'm sure many seniors uh, uh, expect that from their juniors, right? I don't mind. I, I from where I am concerned, I do not pick out juniors. I don't. I don't look at who's who. Uh, whoever comes, if I'm satisfied, he can do a job of work. I. I, I do take them on as much as my chambers uh, is able to absorb, but I look for them, for what I do look for them is to be reliable and the ability to learn, the ability, the willingness to learn. And uh, we look for people who are honest and sincere in their work, in whatever they do. Uh, those are some of the qualities which we look for. And we want, we want hard people who are hard work. Uh, we don't want people who don't who don't work hard who are not willing uh, to work uh, hard that would be difficult but if you if, if you are where i am concerned i what i look for those are the qualities that i look for in a junior right uh, that was a great experience and even many law students uh, the lawyers and even junior lawyers who are joining the session might be benefiting uh, with this discussion and uh, we should remind it again uh, the leads generation faculty of law and pro studies both facebook pages do the live transmission of the discussion so uh, with regard to the profession we'll move on to some direct questions right uh, when handling clients how should we handle right so uh, i think you must understand. Uh, I will mention, uh, refer this in English also. Behind your file, there is a human being. Not one human being, several human beings. So you must keep in mind your client, the man who brings the file, uh, is not only the file, but there are human beings involved. If it's a criminal case, your client might be in prison. He might be out of prison. He has a family. There are his wife, his children, his parents. All of them are affected if he goes to jail. If it's a civil case, if it's a land case, you know that how it might be that man's only house. And if he's kicked out of the house, you know how he how the family would be affected. So it is when you're handling a client, you must keep in mind that you're handling the case for a human being. You must have that. You must remember that. And you must be, you must handle your, you must be absolutely truthful to, you must be absolutely truthful and frank to your client. If your client, if your, you, if your client does not have a case, you must tell the client he doesn't have a case. If some clients come to you with, a, with something where a case cannot be filed, now you must can't mustn't you must not take a case and say just because you want your fees to say that you are going to file some case. You must be able to tell your client, look, you have no case. Naduak netan seva daay kya na mitan naduak na hai kela kya na. Seva daay kya ging gas to gan ne ka. Apni sampoor na idhar tiyan gas to gan ne. Namu gas to gan ne kotha apni matra tiya gan noone. Apni naduak file karan ne gan noona netta tamma naduak kya no. Boru naduak dala, nikan seva da ekarin gas to then ima sandha naduak da neka nukala yu to that. Then, secondly, you must be honest and frank to your client. You must tell him the real chances. Uba, uh, ubagi seva da ekata wanka ben known. Uta ki unknown, at the term make a chance at the end of the net the ki and eka, ki unknown. Chance at nothing, eka ki unknown. Somehow, uba, uba, seva da ekat the kawanka ven a good. A seva diaket, a tear neck, gun a pull on. Namut Uba Avank and Atang seva diaket. Uba seva diaket at the key and at Tang, a seva diaket, some her tear neck and a bed. Naduaka yano the ned. War of the Pilikan no the ned. Eva get tear neck gun a pull on, Uba some poor neck. Avankurutama, obey seva diaket. So you have to be honest, truthful to your client. Second. Thirdly, as I said earlier, you must remember it is a human being. You must have, you must act. Uh, the way, way if you are a client how would you want to be treated that is the same way you must treat your client you must treat your clients with respect your client may be from even the most humble man right but he is entitled to be treated with respect right uh, if you treat people well those people will come back to you right i have i have had clients who tell me 
that they come they choose a lawyer because the lawyer is good to them the law and you must be willing to listen to your client one of the weaknesses in some of us in some of the members of our profession is that we don't listen to the client you must take time listen to the client take instructions from him advice me one of the very senior counsel who i have uh, gone for consultations to is mr ds vijay singh mr ds vijay singh president's counsel he spends a lot of time with the client and he spends time listens to the client even so same with mr mustafa mr faiz mustafa president's counsel they take time they take time to listen to the client and spend time uh, to understand many clients you know you know that even how it is with doctors some clients for the doctor they go not only for the medicine they also go because they want someone to listen to them some people go to the doctor even if his medicine whether it works or not if he is kind to them they keep on going same way with lawyers right so you have to understand that your client clients are human beings they need your support they are people who are in difficulty and my advice is you treat them with respect if you treat them with respect if you are honest to them they will come back to you their next right. case also they will bring to you right certainly uh, and sir next direct question how to deal with fellow lawyers right so with fellow lawyers my advice again is courtesy respect and fairness courtesy respect and fairness to the fellow lawyers whether senior or junior you must act with respect and courtesy to your colleagues you must not take unfair advantage of your client uh, of your uh, colleagues right tamunge sahodara neetignan metha gauravan metha sadharana katiyathu karanna one athra meka rules wala kiyena in in the code of conduct it is there you must act with courtesy respect and fairness gauravan metha गौरवान्वितिन जूनियर I have seen the late Mr. Anand Vijay Sekar, President's Counsel. He was a criminal practitioner. I have seen how he, in court, the amount of respect and courtesy he showed the junior counsel. Right. So uh, that is very important. So whether you are, if you are, and also if you are a junior, you must treat your seniors also with respect. I know that respect sometimes has to be earned. Uh, respect cannot be demanded. but there are little things for instance uh, sometimes we see in court uh, sometimes there is a very senior there are see, uh, sometimes a senior president's counsel who is standing and uh, someone who has uh, just taken notes goes right in front sits in the front row and waits right now i know no one can regulate this by law right you can't say juniors cannot sit in the front row but personally for myself uh, when i was as a junior i would never go and rush and sit in the front seat i i would prefer to take even now i sometimes i prefer to take a seat in the second row because uh, then that that becomes easier right so so one thing so my message to you courtesy respect fairness to your colleagues whether it is your junior colleague or your to your senior colleague. but of course that doesn't mean you have to let a junior go uh, let a senior lawyer go rough shot do गौरवान्वितव कटुतकोनेटमेंट 
people, there are a lot of people who are able to be very courteous, but very firm. Sometimes people, people mistake when you smile, when you are courteous to people. Some people think that is a sign of weakness, but that is not. Sometimes it is the people who are very courteous, who can be toughest. One of the toughest judges I have met is Justice Mark Fernandez. But always very soft-spoken, very courteous. But no lawyer could try to take him for a ride. And uh, that is the time. So, so as a uh, young, whether you are young or a senior lawyer, act with courtesy, respect and fairness towards your parents. Right. Uh, that was with regard to dealing with fellow lawyers. Sir, uh, next direct question I would like to ask you in this manner. Uh, as a student at law college, uh, and I was attending to one of your sessions where you are delivering, and you said how to deal with, with judges in a beautiful manner. You sorted out a certain mistake of your mm -hmm. opponent and just clarify it. And uh, there's a beautiful story. So dealing with uh, judges, can you explain with that story? Because we entertain right. that story at the moment at law college. I think it's better. Right. The a huge crowd okay. is there. It's, it's, uh, right. So I, I will tell you this story. You know the story, Charita. Uh, yeah, this was after I had left. I I was in this was when I when I started my private practice somewhere in 1999. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a judge in the Supreme Court called Justice Deera, Justice Ranjit Deera. Now I got a case where what had happened is it was a case originally in the Magistrates Court. Hello, in a mulin mulin naru thi bilati in the Magistrate Court. Magistrate Court ke tunse pahalo suni baganti yarte. Can me simple hurt toilet. Two years suspended for five years. So the accused was unhappy with the conviction. He appealed to the High Court. Now, the law is when, the, when an accused appeals. The High Court or the Court of Appeal, whatever court to which he appeals to, can either allow the appeal, dismiss the appeal, and if the court dismisses the appeal, if the court feels that the sentence is not enough, the court can enhance the sentence. Then, Aparada Abhyachanaka, Aparada Abhyachanaka, Vittikare Abhyachanakara, Vittikare Abhyachanakara. Abhyachana Adhikarnet, Nata Mahadikar, Palatbada Mahadikarnet, Puluang, Appeal Lika Nishprabha Karala, Danduam Adhikarne Hengi Matiyan Oana Danduam Adhoi Kheela, Danduam Vedikaran Nath Puluang, Danduam Vedikaran Nath Puluang. This is the same thing, you know, you see the same thing, the magistrate court, the magistrate's court gave him a suspended sentence. He appealed to the High Court of Kalambo. What did the High Court judge do? High Court judge dismissed the appeal. Not only dismiss the appeal, judge said this sentence is not enough. Suspended sentence is not enough. You must go to jail and increase, the, set aside the suspended sentence and impose the jail. Now, thereafter, the client came to me. Now, remember, the, uh, the high court is well within its power to do that. Mahadikarnetra, ihema danduvama vedikaranda balaya diyeno palatmada mahadikarnetra. Then, me pudgala mangavatava api shreshtadikarnetra giyan. Special leave to appeal. Special leave to appeal like a We Nadu Ava, Justice Deeratna, Vinishaka, Deeratna Vinishakaratuma, Mulasana Dharma, Vinishasana, bench led by Justice Deeratna. Now, I opposing me was a senior state counsel in the Aegis Department. And that senior state counsel is now in the Court of Appeal. As the court judges started, Justice Deeratna said, he said, the High Court doesn't have the power to do this. Um, so and so, uh, he addressed the senior state counsel and said, the High Court doesn't have the power to do to increase the sentence. Now, when he said that, the, uh, that senior state counsel also didn't want to contradict the judge. And the senior state counsel also said, yes, my lord, that is so. Now, actually, the High Court has the power. So the, the judge was making a mistake. Justice Dhiratna was making a mistake. He thought the High Court doesn't have the power to enhance the sentence. But it has the power. The senior state counsel who was there didn't want to contradict the bench. So I said, yes, my, that is so my law. Now, I was 
it is it was advantageous for me that the court had this wrong impression mage naduwata vaase sahagatai adhikaranayata hitaneka mehema mahadhikaranayata daduwama wedi karanna behai kiyala kiyala adhikaranaya e hitapu eka eka waradi neethi me tattwaya e waradi neethi neethi me tattwaya adhikaranaya katiyutu karanaka mata vaase mata vaase adhikaranaya hitanana high court ekata balaye nahe kiyala ehena meka ayin karala dala mage mage naduwa iwara karala mage vaase ekata naduwa aragena mata yanna puluwa habai මම ඒ අවස්ථාවේදී තීරණය කර ඒක මම මම ඒ ශනේකින් ඒක මම තීරණය කරන්න උනේ අයි ඩිසයිඩඩ් අයි මස්ට් ටෙල් ද ට්‍රුත් ටු කෝ සෝ අයි ටෝල්ඩ් ද ජජස් අයි සෙඩ් නෝ මයි ලෝඩ් අයි යු සෙඩ් දී ආ ද වර්ඩ්ස් අයි සෙඩ් අයි සෙඩ් මයි ලෝඩ් විත් ද ග්‍රේටස් රෙස්පෙක්ට් ද හයි කෝට් හැස් ද පවර් ටු එන්හාන්ස් ද සෙන්ටන්ස් විදේශකාර තුමනි මිතාමත් ගෞරවන මම කියනවා මේ ඔබතුමාගේ ඔබතුමයි කියන කතාව වැරදි प्रोसि Anyway, he granted me leave to appeal. I had like, some other grounds, uh, various grounds. He granted me leave to appeal. Issued a stay order. Issued a stay order, stopping the sentence from being implemented. Then, ultimately, the court decided in my favor on other grounds, not on the ground that the high court doesn't have the power, but on certain other grounds, and they suspended the sentence again and restored the uh, magistrate. Now, because my main main thing was he didn't want to go to jail, right? Then. I heard from one of the other judges on the bench. One of the other judges on the bench told me that Justice Deera Ratna was very happy that I had told the truth to court. That I had told the truth to court that day. So I was not known to Justice Deera Ratna. Uh, I was a young uh, counsel. I had I I was about five years in the in practice. I was six, about six years in practice at that time, and. Uh, that i had to, uh, I, i he didn't know me personally but he had been very happy and he had told the other judges this is what we expect from counsel now there after what happened that was 1999 just the dear ratna retired in two, if i remember right in 2001 for the next two years next two or three years just the dear ratna used to treat me with a lot of respect when i appeared before him If a case was fifty-fifty, he would hold with me. He would listen to me. I was able to convince him. On cases, if I made a submission, he would listen to me. As far as possible, uh, if I if I counted, if I had done ten cases before him, I think about eight I got in my favor. I don't say it was only because of that. I must have had a I I must have had a good case also. I think, but if the case was fifty-fifty. I could I could see, and the 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 way he the the man, mannerism in court, the way he way he conducted himself towards me, he treated me with respect. So what I want to tell you, why I I, I tell this at every apprentice uh, lecture, practical training lecture, I say this. It is so very important that the court trusts you. Are the bench and the bar, a vinisha a vinisha asane ay nitik na varun atar viswasya tiyeno. we act on trust we, 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 what we tell the judges the judges believe the judges don't have to second guess they don't have to go back and look at the books to see whether what we are saying is correct right we and some so you have to build up that trust today when if i i also make mistakes when, but if i make mist- a mistake and i i say it's a mistake the judges accept that i what i have said is a mistake why why is that because you are you build that trust judges expect lawyers to be honest and frank to court remember you are an officer of court oba adhikarne niladari you are your client pays you your fees but your primary duty is to court that is something unique in this profession right you take your fees from the client but still your primary duty is to to the court house and that to the judge to the court and the public at large so that doesn't mean that you don't have to come and tell the court everything your client says but you have to be truthful and you must not deceive the court the court must be able to trust you 
that is so very important if you do that you will see that judges uh, will start listening to you so as as young lawyers when you go in it's very important very important to build up that confidence in, uh, in the bench right i have i have seen this is my experience but i have seen others also how they they build up the trust right i have had uh, i have had sometimes uh, certain lawyers uh, say uh, certain judges say look at so and so he is very good we we listen to him he can be trusted we know that he can be trusted so that is how this uh, our profession works in in the court pro you must build a trust with the judiciary uh, with the judge right. okay hope you entertain and learn uh, some beautiful things uh, from our story sir my next question so there were many challenging moments of your profession what is the most remarkable one can you sort out because we are running out of time <laughs> we we'll conclude all those things uh, in a beautiful okay. manner so what is the I, I i identify i identify uh, two uh, the most challenging uh, so far uh, i would say uh, i i had really see three cases have uh, been the most challenging one was the impeachment of the chief justice shirani banda like i was of course junior counsel i, I was not the senior i was the junior counsel but i also acted as the spokesperson for the legal team and that was a public case so we had to go public we had to make certain statements uh, public statement and so i uh, uh, was involved in that and also at the same time we had to organize the uh, there was a the bar, the bar itself was against the impeachment so we uh, had to organize the uh, profession and i i i played a key important role in that secondly in defending general sarath fonseca two out of his three criminal cases were cases in which i appeared one of those was where i took up the defense of otrofwa konvi he had already been convicted by the court martial so my argument was once he was convicted by the court martial you cannot try him again uh, in a civilian court and for that i had to do re certain research and there my teaching experience also helped me i i, I came across this doctrine called the doctrine of implied repeal uh, that when there are two conflicting laws you give force to the later law neeti dekha katra so between the army act and the criminal procedure code there was a uh, difference in the wording yeah, uh, army sorry between the army act and there was another law called the iccpr act uh, uh, iccpr act there was a particular section which contradicted so i argued that the iccpr act had to be given preference and the court up here high court upheld my submission and uh, discharge general fonseca so that I, that, uh, that is the second case the third case is a more recent case which i have undertaken i, I undertook to defend uh, to appear for a particular lawyer who is in detention and i found that case of course uh, i uh, once again i uh, there is another senior president counsel who is appearing now but uh, i undertook that case amidst uh, i knew that it, it is not the most popular case but i believe that you cannot go in for popularity when you are appearing for cases you have to do what is right what is right according to the light of your conscience and that uh, so those are the three i would say most challenging uh, cases which when you which you ask right uh, then mamath ee langata obutumange nahannata bala porutune obutuma ganadena karapu me nadu teendu pilibanda janadhipati nidichimodi mama mage ee langa prashna mama me vidya ganna obutuma me rate tibena paksha paata beda desha palana matavada kisima deyak nosalaka satya sadharane wenuwen peni isindapa pudgalayak vidiyata bohomayak pudgalena boha artha dakkanawa ethin janadhipati nidichin saaliya peris satyavadiwa me vidihata nadu avara waladi peni indinna avasthawa wala epima obutumage it's because of your talent and uh, because of your uh, the personality that you uh, build up throughout the career other than that there might be certain challenges in facing those leading cases so can you speak a little bit about the challenges of that cases yes so i i think as i said earlier one of the challenges is that you have to sometimes uh, appear in cases with which if you feel is right if you feel that you are appearing for a cause or if sometimes you it might not be the most popular causes but you don't judge cases on popularity i remember once i appeared in a case in ratnapura it was a sensational case relating to a political assassination it was in the magistrates court just a week after the killing and there were people holding placards outside against saying lawyers not to appear so i i went to the ratnapura courts i i i went by bus that day 
that time i did not have a uh, car uh, that was after i had just left the ages department and i uh, so had to go amidst the crowd which was hold which were holding placards so what i did i i had my coat was folded it was in a plastic bag i just went in no one knew uh, i for what case i was going in i appeared in the case uh, finished the case folded my coat again into the put it into the plastic bag <laughs> and the, so but uh, uh, that and i i sometimes i have had to appear in cases where which uh, maybe the uh, powers that be do not like uh, and for that reason sometimes uh, you find that you 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 uh, it is very easy sometimes it is easier when you don't have a position on matters uh, mm-hmm. even in the bar people who there are people who don't have any who don't take up positions on matters they find it very easy because they don't have a position either way uh, but that is not for me i uh, prefer to have a position to act on principles right uh, that was a brief uh, thing about the challenges that you faced amidst those cases sir are there any particular figures personalities that you remember in this career well i think uh, among there are many who i can remember but as i told you one person one outstanding judge who i remember is justice mark fernando and uh, i i really admire justice mark fernando also because of the if you read his judgments Uh, how precise the judgments are many of the judgments are based on first principles and it is so very easy to understand justice mark fernando's judgments were not how hundreds of pages but always very precise uh, as brief as possible to the point but very easy to understand and i have appeared before as a junior i have appeared before justice mark fernando uh, for about 10 years and i always found it a treat to appear before him because he is very intellectually challenging he doesn't take uh, what you say for granted but uh, always acting with he was very soft spoken acting with courtesy but firmness so i think he is one person and of course there was another judge the late J- justice fnd jayasuri who was a, br- a brilliant judge he was in the court of appeal uh, his knowledge of the law and uh, the his the, the way he conducted himself in court he could sometimes dictate from the bench he would give, dictate bench orders with authorities uh those are uh, some of the people who really have made the impression on me right and uh, the final question to you sir we uh, we discuss about more than one hour nearly one and a half hours right the final question from me uh you always say for your journey as first students build on principles in an ethical manner so can we give a final piece of advice to our lawyers law students and the entire community of law uh, for the legal profession who are involved in this discussion right yeah so one thing is i want to say is especially young lawyers who are just about to enter the profession there will be many people who discourage you who say that there is not enough work to go around and they there might be people who tell you do that who might try to discourage you my my uh, word answer for that is that is not correct there is work in this profession if you if you work hard if you are willing to be dedicated there is work the first few years of your tra- life is going to be tough that we in uh, that has always been a tamunge urthi jeevithe palaveni avurudu kipe dushkara kalaya kwenni nuthi visheshayen api dannawa me covid kalet ekka pera nowa tat wada api visheshayen kanishtha nithi nam me dushkara kalaya ekka tula kalaya ekka thamai kattitu karanna siddha vela thiyenne but if you are firm if you stand for what is right if you do a proper job a dedicated job and if you are honest to yourself and to your client there this uh, there is a future for you in this profession but remember this is not a 100 meters this is a marathon right so don't try to earn your uh, every your from, from your first client don't try to earn the fees which you have to get for a year right ara kathawath thiyena rattaran vittara dana thara marala wedan ne vittara ganna hari e meruwot e vittara labenne iti e wage that you can't kill the goose that lays the golden egg you will get only one golden egg at a time right so don't don't try to be in a rush i know the pressures are greater much greater than when we were juniors pressures are greater but still this is a test match not a 
right? Okay. So right. remember that and do your work, and I'm sure you will succeed. Definitely. So finally, taking silk. Uh, as you were in the discussion, President's Council is high, uh, higher in the, in the hierarchy of legal profession in a certain level. So taking silk, can we comment a little bit on that for the benefit of the yeah. entire community? Yeah, okay. So taking silk means being appointed a President's Council. We get this from the British English tradition. We get this from the English tradition. In Sri Lanka, it's a president who appoints, it's a constitutional power of the president to appoint President's Council. And there is uh, the president, there, there is a criteria set out in the constitution, eminence and integrity and professional rectitude. Uh, that is the, basically the criteria. But uh, so it is uh, a recognition. It is a title really, uh, we, uh, which is given uh, to, senior, to senior lawyers who the president feels fit to appoint. But of course, I must tell you, there are, there are also very eminent counsel who have never be never applied or never been made president's counsel so or queen's counsel so two of them to give you an example or three of them one is dr colvin had deceived he was never queen's counsel but or president's counsel but in every aspect he had that eminence secondly mr rkw gunasekar who was a principal of law college he never applied for uh, to be a president's counsel but he there were instances where the court invited him uh, in the famous Abe Sundra versus Abe Sundra case, he was invited to be amicus, to advise, to be the friend of the court, to advise the court on the law, right? And thirdly, Mr. S. L. Gunasekara, the late Mr. S. L. Gunasekara. So, uh, uh, taking civil, this is what taking civil is about, but there are uh, eminent counsel who have not been, uh, who, are, uh, who have not taken civil, but their eminence remains. Right. Uh... We had a great discussion, sir. Uh, finally, Mama Kiyapuidi had a Obutumai Katavin, one punchy punchy, Vachanaka Karagana, then up in me, Vedasatan Malava, Pavatwane, the DT Shishain, Eva Game, a Kanish and Eti Nevarun, apprentices, a Kodama benefit when we get If I make a mistake, I'll humbly uh, say sorry, sir. Uh, if I make a statement, concluding statement, a curable, fair human being. I think uh, this uh, this thing I just prepared a curable, fair human being. Uh, I shall explain it. Uh, all the participants who are joining this session, uh, you can remember we had a discussion Zoom meeting with President's Council Salia Piris, and remember this phrase: a curable, fair human being. I shall explain it. Uh, so you said some words: curable. C stands for confidence and courtesy. U stands for uncertainty, R stands for reliable and even respectfulness, and uh, A, availability, and B stands for building network, and L stands for ability to learn and listening, and E stands for ethical, that is for curable. I think uh, that will su survive uh, in this field. And even you said fair, we should uh, be some, we should have some sort of fairness. And the final word, human being, you said, behind each and every file, there's a human being. So I think uh, that statement will conclude uh, the entire story that you told with us in this session. Right. So shall we open up uh, for the audience uh, two, three minutes sure. for any question yeah, that they do right. have? Okay, we are right. Yes. Okay, this chance is for audience. Uh, we need to, uh, we are running out of time. So we can give one, two uh, opportunities for the audience as well. Uh, there were some questions which was on, on the chat. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, to, but you can ask, let the audience ask the questions. Uh, so, okay, I think this is important. One question which is asked, what are the weaknesses you see in juniors and apprentices these days? How can they work on those and develop their career? Okay, so uh, one thing is this, uh, every uh, there, is a, there is a cartoon which says every generation grows up and complains about the next generation, right? So uh, I, I personally, I mean, I don't make a difference between the juniors of these days and I am not one who says not like, uh, so there is a, some a very known uh, personality, he used to say apparently, I wish, I wish I had a junior like myself when I was a junior, right? Uh, but I, I don't say that. Every, every generation has its pluses and minuses, but maybe, maybe that you need to, uh, 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 this aspect of working hard. I have seen some 
junior is looking at the time and wanting to uh, now uh, we are used to a culture of working late hours maybe 9 o'clock 8 o'clock 9 o'clock we don't uh, we don't look at that uh, some uh, do, uh, a few juniors i have noticed uh, are a little concerned about their time maybe that they are better time managers than us but uh, from uh, I, I i think that hard hard work is necessary i just want to share this story of uh, one junior of mine he is practicing in Mathale. He is quite see the senior lawyer in Mathale. He has in his purse the first fee I had given him. He, he showed me one day when I went to Mathale. He has his purse, uh, the first fee I had paid him in an envelope. I asked him why he is keeping it, why he didn't use the money. Uh, he said, "No, sir. This is to remind you myself that of the hard work which uh, uh, which has to be put in." So this is one thing I think. Uh, that extra hard work is necessary. The other thing is, of course, I, I know that times are different. Uh, I know mandarno kale, me kale, e kale, venas kela. But sometimes I think you have to wait. Uh, earning money is, you need to earn money, but earning money is not the be all and end all of life. Right? That is, uh, those are the second thing. Uh, the, so earning money is good, but that has money, money will come in, uh, but don't make money your first priority. And when you build up a successful practice, as you go on, money will come in. Don't worry. But if you say if money becomes your primary, then your situation may be a little different. Those are two things I would like to. Uh, those are my observations. Right. Uh, we had uh, some questions uh, with regard to the chat and you answered it, sir. And thank you very much, sir, for joining us with this session. And we are extremely grateful to have you at this moment uh, amidst a busy schedule. Uh, you join us and even advising the law students, apprentices, and even junior lawyers. So finally, again, I would like to remind the statement, a curable, fair human being, for concluding all your aspects of the speech. And we had a a uh, lovely session, an interactive session, and even uh, all of the participants who are joining with this Zoom platform and uh, the Facebook pages of Pro Studies and Lead Generation, uh, they all have entertained and even took some advices for their life as well. Janadipati Nechi Tumani, Behavin Mastuti Obutumante, Ami Avastavat Samaki Napaha Samaka Sampantunata, Pro Studies Saha Lead Generation Facebook Madhyo Sit, Zoom Takshinu Sit, Ape Sachi Viva, Pura. ियोग Right. Okay. Uh, this is the second session of the Pro Studies, uh, the profession which is conducted by the lead generation of Faculty of Law and Pro Studies, Sri Lanka Law College. So stay tuned for another session with more interactive knowledge. So awake the professional in you. Thank you very much.